Hey guys, Matt here with Carolina Coops, and I just showed up to a customer's house. Uh, Melissa here, who is a previous customer, and my guys were just here, was it last week, two weeks ago? About three weeks. Gosh, it been that long already. Yeah. Three weeks ago to put in a beautiful chicken coop right there. Look at that beautiful Carolina coop. We're gonna go up there and look at that here in a little bit, but I asked Melissa if I could put her on the spot because she was just gonna start talking about something, and that is comparing, I hope, our coop to the previous coop. Now. And I don't blame her. I'm the same way. We don't want to get sued. We're not going to try to beat up our competition. Here's the main goal. And here's been, especially my goal for 2020 is I want to continue to educate everyone, whether you're going to buy a chicken coop or you're going to build your own chicken coop. Here's the things that most people never think about. And you're going to hear me saying it. And yeah, I'm going to push my product. My product is the best because I'm a chicken person. I want what's best for chickens. So I want to hear from the customer. Now, I'm not going over to her coop yet. I don't know what she's going to say. Um, but uh, are you ready? You want to go ahead yeah. and do it? All right, so let's go on over. And you hear her goats. I was just picking her brain. I love these goats. All right, guys, so now I'm behind the camera. Um, Melissa, please just go ahead and uh, tell me. So the premise of getting this coop initially was that we have coyotes. Mm -hmm. We live on hundreds of acres here, um, and every night coyotes pass through. So it, to me, being the first time getting a coop, like it looks like a prison. I'm like, they'll never get in, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So with that being said, also the capacity, which was totally false. So we have 14 chickens. See, see, I didn't pay her to say that. No, bad. What was, what, what, what did they tell you the capacity was? Uh, maybe up to 16. I know. You just, I mean, it's crowded. It's, it's yucky inside. Yes. It's just a crowded living space. Yes, exactly. Okay. And then, um, the other thing, which is my fault is we have like a hilly area. So the fact that this is technically like a tractor coop um, to move, it, the, the wheels, we even put different wheels on it. Nothing could um, make me, who I think I'm pretty strong here on our farm. Could She's been farming this. her entire life. She's strong. Yeah. So I just, you know, um, the wheels were terrible. Then um, in regards to the attachments that seem really cool when you go to get it, like the waterer, that's totally broken and gone. Um, was not well made with the little red, mm -hmm. whatever you call those. Like the float indicate. Oh, the nipples that they drink from? Yeah, that, okay. forget it. Those were completely breaking. The, um, the feed tube, they never wanted to eat out of. So even though we cut at the end and they had access to sticking their head in, they just like, it's not natural for them. They want to eat off the ground and they want to peck and do their thing. So this um, also too, when it was storing food, um, it didn't seem like easy to keep filling, even though it, it would seem like it. It's just so much easier to feed a feeder. But when you see our new feeder that I'm really excited about, you'll see why. I can't wait. All right, okay. so now I want, when everyone's listening to this video, listen to some of the key words that keep things so simple. She used a word I love that is natural. I put a fancy, actually my chicken girl put a fancy twist on it. Encourage their instincts. Think about if you're designing a coop or buying a coop and you don't know, well, what, what, what should I believe? What should I not believe? Think about what chickens do naturally. Look at this. This is, we bought this, it's been one year. And we, have maybe four days out of the year that reach like over in the hundreds. It's usually in the eighties here. Um, so there's no reason that something should be having that problem. Um, this on this side too. So when the rainy season came, then we had water in the coop, which was a deal breaker. Yeah, that's so a bummer. Said, All right, so this coop's so only a year old. A year. And it wasn't this color. Here's a coop that this is a little abnormal as far as first stepping back, looking at the materials. What really makes a good structure, in this case, chicken coops, good from bad, uh, there's many things, but one of them is the choice of material. So now my initial thought would be, if we come back here, okay, look at this thing. It's like a fortress, she was saying. It's metal, we're gonna keep coyotes out. Uh, we got, you know, we got some drop down aprons, which is kind of nice. Um, and then you also think about, okay, well, it's plastic. All right, so that's gonna last forever. Um, what color was it? Brown. <laughs> this was brown? Yeah. Okay, well, and... And, and now it's pink. <laughs> it, it, it is pink. So, um, okay, and then she was just... And so, let's take a close look at... 
again, I'm not trying to beat up this company. I just want people to be educated on what the thing on the things they may not expect. I'll guarantee you this was not cheap. Like I don't feel so bad picking on the cheap coops coming in from China. Um, can I ask you how much you paid for this? Is that bad? Is that wrong of me? I apologize. I don't want to say because then my husband will find out. <laughs> We have actually saved a lot of marriages over the years. That's a common um, topic, and that's where we love to show the value. Well, here's what she's pointing out is plastic, yeah, it might last forever. Well, the color's not going to, but also it's just starting to warp, and you're going to have problems um, that you just don't want. And then the other thing, too, is I'm not a fan of, mm -hmm. I do not like to lift up roofs on egg hutches. Uh, we have many videos out there, but one... I'm a parent, most people are parents. Nothing makes me happier, right? When the kids come running up, they have easy access to their egg hutch. Uh, but number two, if you got your girls that are in there laying, you know, okay, every day we're gonna go get the eggs when they're not in there. It doesn't happen. You're gonna get them when you can. Um, you, you, you lift this up, you're gonna scare them. They're very aware of predators, aerial predators. So they think you're an aerial predator, you're gonna startle them and scare them. So anyways, and it's all about keeping the stress down. We're at the back of the coop, back of the hen house. Definitely not enough roosting space. So, okay, roosting space. Now you said they recommended 16 chickens. Question we get all the time, how many chickens can we fit in the uh, coop? Well, I always like to tell people, there's the hen house and then there's the run. Two different factors, especially if you free range or not. So let's just talk about the hen house because this is important because they're gonna come in here every night, whether you have a run or not, whether you free range or not, doesn't matter. We have, I'm gonna say four foot mm -hmm. depth. Okay, yeah. so we got one, yeah. two, three, um, Roost bars, four foot at the four foot rule. I'm sorry, at the one foot rule, that's 12 um, chickens. 12 squished chickens. 12 squished chickens. Yes. So I am a fan of a king size bed. You would <laughs> never want to max out your hen house. But in theory, I would say, okay, you could get away with 12 chickens, but that's at max capacity, which is never really good unless you have really ideal situations like. So this isn't too bad. This is, again, they have a little bit more headroom than normal. Um, but what I see that is an absolute nightmare, if you guys are watching, what do you think? We really need to do the math here. If we were to add up the cubic foot, okay, that we have for inside the hen house, ratio to cross ventilation, what is that? A three and a half inch in diameter circle? There and there. And let's be fair, let's add in the... Um, chicken door, nowhere close to enough ventilation. So now I'm gonna give it back to you. Goodbye, bad <laughs> How often did you have to clean it? Uh, crowded coops equals having to clean more, so. Can I steal that from you? Yeah. Crowded coops equals cleaning more. Yeah, they're just not happy. Um, but you know, I might over clean. A lot of people do. Yeah. So, um, at least once a week, we would tend to it. Have you ever been able to incorporate the deep litter system? Well, we have it now. Yeah. I can't wait yeah. till we get up there and talk about that. Okay. So now I want to hit on something that is a very hot topic that I get, I get frustrated. I'll be honest with you. And it's only because I now have learned so much. So many times they say, well, Matt, I got to have a chicken coop that moves around. <laughs> exactly so before i give my twist how did you have chickens before this coop no. oh okay okay so that's that's excellent so explain to me walk me through it real quick when you chose this coop too was it did you have that feeling like i want to be able to move the coop around tractor it not let them free range we just have a lot of animals here and i was like well, i don't need one more thing to clean so if we can move it and they can have, we have a lot of space here. We have that availability, first mm -hmm. of all. So if we can move this coop and they can be on fresh ground and be self-sufficient on clean ground, um, that's a win-win, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, interestingly enough, you'll see in our new coop that the floor of that is all compost um, that we have- Beautiful. You know, recycled from our animals <clears throat> anyhow, so. Right. so. 
here, here's the thing, guys. In my opinion, I, I've said this before, I don't care how big your run is. There's nothing better than letting chickens do what they do naturally, and that is free range. But yes, you're going to, and everyone's got predators. I know people are like, well, I got predators. I got, everyone has predators, maybe different levels of pressure of predators, different types of predators, but there's predators everywhere. Look at this one. <laughs> he's ready to he's roll. Been known, he's been known to get chickens too. Yeah, that's what that's what we bred him to do. Um, <laughs> basically, I guess what we're saying is, you don't need to move your coop around if you if you cannot let your chickens free range. Get as big of a run possible, and I'm sure when we go up there, we're going to talk a little bit more about why. But here's the other thing that uh, Melissa mentioned in the very beginning that a lot of people take for granted. If you are going to tractor a coop. For whatever reason, whatever your justification is, it is so difficult as it is, and you better hope you have perfect flat, like a soccer field or a football field. But when it comes to egg laying birds, I can't think of one reason why you ever have to tractor a coop. Here's the other thing people don't realize. Now this is nice. So this came with a solid roof over the run. Yes. Okay. So that's important. If you're thinking about building a coop and or uh, you know you're coop shopping, a lot of coops you'll see. The roof is screened. The ceiling of the run is screened. That's not good. You want a solid roof, and I definitely love metal because it has such a high TSR. It'll reflect that sun. But think about it. Always remember, chickens are a natural woodland animal. When they're on the forest floor, this is the canopy from the trees, and it will provide them shade. They still will get plenty of sun, especially in the morning. All right, you ready to uh, walk up there? The key to having a dirt floor is that you keep it clean and animals should never be standing in water for a long time. Um, and you always keep your pens clean. So we, we practice that with all of our animals, uh, horses, goats, whatever. So it's never a problem. <clears throat> yeah. we don't have, we've never had diseases or any kind of illnesses or anything from what we were currently already doing. So I wasn't afraid to do that in the coop. Yeah, so what I often say is, um, you know, we have this little creature called microbes that just does an amazing job for us. And if we give them too much, they're not going to be able to keep up with it. And that's one of the things that, um, like with our chicken runs, <clears throat> when it comes to if you cannot free range and we start talking about, well, how many chickens can I put in there? Really what determines that is, number one, that the soil that should be in the run can metabolize that nitrogen in a timely manner. Um, if you start to have a foul smell, you got too much nitrogen. Okay, so here we are. Beautiful Carolina coop. Mm -hmm. Now, Melissa, I, I do got to say, which I haven't officially said it yet. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, thank you so much. And I also want to, all honesty, 100% honesty, how was the delivery team? How was my guys? They were great. I wanted a barbecue with them. We had a great time. Um, I actually built the base. Oh, that's right. That's yes. right. I remember so that. Anybody out there who thinks that they can't prep their own, I am not a woodworking, I'm just a hardworking person. Um, so I went to the hardware store and the guy at our local hardware store told me how to do it and how to put it together. And um, yeah, I just removed the grass and then used a level. And then when they came, it was like I got graded and they said it was like a B plus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then um, we just fixed a little bit of it was off. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they were very. So they were good. To have around. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, very important because as we continue to grow and, you know, like every company has their growing pains. Uh, for me to not be here, I hate to use the word babysitting, but. You know, I wasn't here. This is one of the beginning coops where I'm not here. And yes, building a base, absolutely critical. You did an amazing job. So here we have our very popular Carolina coop. It is, here I'm gonna teach you guys. Here's how you can tell how long a coop is. So if you look at that vertical column, that vertical column, that vertical column, See how they're wider? That's because there's two two by fours, if you will, coming together. Our walls standard are every six foot. So we got six, so we got one, two, three, four. Four walls of six foot, so we now know this coop is 24 foot long, right? Yep. Awesome. And then that also means the hen house is six foot deep. This one, there's really no cheat. I can just tell you it's eight foot. And what do you think? We love it, it's awesome. The uh, predator skirt is here. We put crushed rock on it because we have a big kind of garden that we're putting off of it um, that we're in the prep stages with. 
but um, yeah, come on in. All right, awesome. So I'm glad you mentioned that. She yeah. did it, and I didn't have to because I was probably going to forget for you YouTube chicken police that just got a comment on anything. Right um, I, 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 yeah, it's right there. See? There's the predator apron. Hi, girls. Your girls look beautiful. Okay, so now you got a Dutch door. We have a Dutch door, which I'm partial to. I'm a horse girl, so we love our Dutch door. Makes good sense. Um, super cute. And you know what? This is cool for the kids. Like, they're not letting chickens out, so they can come and just say hello independently for young kids. I love that. Yeah. So... I always in the beginning said, well, the Dutch door is more for bragging rights. It's just really yeah. cool. And then I had another That's client so say, I love that we can throw our table scraps in there yeah. and not let the chickens out. Yeah. This is the first time. Now we got a third reason. See, I got the best customers. You guys come up with the best stuff. Yeah. It's a great way for the kids to say hi. Yeah. There's nothing better than that. Yeah. Awesome. That's yeah. a great point. Yeah. So we're inside the run. And if we, when we got to get out, there's our lockout cable, stainless steel anti-lockout cable. So we just pull that. Also great for kids locking each other in. <laughs> people always love to learn about what breeds you have and you have some very common mm -hmm. breeds mm -hmm. that um a lot of people that are brand new they don't they're not familiar with yet like they always know about the rhode island reds that's always right. everyone's number one and then when you start to graduate a little you start learning about your buff orpingtons the right blondes. and you have your silver lace wine dots yeah Possibly Bard Rocks. Looks like Bard Rock and Bard Rock or Do uh, Dominique's or Bard Rocks. Uh, Bard Rocks and we have Americana. Got Americana. Can you guys spot the Americana? The Americana. What do we look for for Americana? Oh, look at the big puffy cheeks. Hi, baby. Really big puffy cheeks. Yeah. Look at her. And then the dark legs. Mm -hmm. Hi, hi, hi. All right, come on, come on, come over. Say hi. Get it out of the way. Um, a comment. This or, is a New Hampshire Red. New Hampshire Red. Yeah. Big, beautiful comb. Hi, hi. One thing to say, so we have a um, chicken that's handicapped. So it's this gray one underneath here. You'll see that she always stays like out of the way. Mm -hmm. So when Adam, is Adam right installing? AV, tall guy, Adam. Yeah. Yes, we call him AV, yep. They were asking like, where do you want the ladder? Do you want your ladder to sit here or do you want your ladder to sit here? Aesthetically, I wanted it here. Yeah. But our little handicapped chicken would get up to here and she couldn't get the last step. So this is her little handicap. Ladder. Is it working? Yeah, she'll, she'll be able, once she gets up to here and to here, she can pop right in. Okay, so I, I do want to, I, I do want to get something for people. Now, again, always, always honest. I'm not paying her. I'm putting her on the spot. Actually, I feel awful, but she's doing such a great job. We just changed to this new style ladder. We used to have what we called the ramp and... We changed it for a couple reasons. One, we think this looks good. Number two, we had so much scrap. I was like, I hate scrap. Why not use that up? And actually continues to help us keep the price down on everything. But also, we've experimented with silkies. And this actually helped silkies to get up there. And we said, this is a no-brainer. Let's do it. When did you put your chickens in here? The first, first day. First day. How long yeah. ago was that now? It's been maybe two and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks. Yeah. Have they had any problems? None. See, I, I didn't just make that up, guys. No. They, you know, they may have had to learn it, but they already did kind of have the instinct. To, chick, chickens already want to go up. Think about it. Before coops were invented, they want to go up in the tree branches. Well, that's what we're doing here. That's one of the reasons why I love that we have an elevated hen house. Um, the idea is to have this ramp um, even easier, especially for your special chickens like silkies. Now, I, Melissa, I'm with you. Um, aesthetics are a big thing. I don't like it up here. I feel like we take away from this beautiful trim work we're doing. But um, it is a bigger step, and that is something – I'm going to go back to the drawing board. I never thought about it. Luckily, we don't have a lot of handicapped chickens, but it does happen. Yeah. Bumblefoot, uh, a broken leg, things like that. So She's, she's been a... in pigeon tent since she was a chick. Um, okay. Pigeon – is that – that's yeah. not a pun, right? Or is that not – No, that's, no, that, like okay. for real. She just has her feeder inward, and, but she's – She a blue – is she a blue, um, she's not a cochin. She's a blue wine dot. Okay, yeah, I was trying to see if her feet are booted. So, blue wine dot. Yeah. I love that blue grayish color. So fat. Look at, look at the big, fat, fluffy feathers. That's a great way to tell um, how happy they are, how healthy they are. They're not stressed. Not one of them's picking on each other. If you have chickens that are missing feathers here or whatever, and you're trying to figure out who the culprit is, look for the best looking hen. 
So now a question we get a lot, and I, I love to get customers' opinions. What do we put inside the run? And guys, again, what I, if you, especially if you cannot free range, I always say, what is on the forest floor? What allows microbes to thrive because that's what's going to break the droppings down that's what's going to make it nice and easy because chickens you want them to work look at let them scratch they want to scratch if they can't scratch it's going to be because the surface is too hard that's going to cut up their feet it's going to stress them out you're going to have more chances for things like bumblefoot um and then also listen just listening to them you can tell like they want to know who i am they want to get on camera but they're not freaking out how old are your hens uh, we got them last year as chicks. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Now, where did you get them? We can give a uh, shout out to whomever. We got them at Western Farms in Western Santa Rosa, where everybody in our area lines up um, at the crack of dawn. <laughs> so. I always love the plug um, where people get chickens and baby chicks. <clears throat> I think that's awesome. So, now, you're a farmer, so you deal with a lot of droppings, a lot of feces. You have a lot of experience, and I'm sure... A lot of good stuff to say, probably way smarter than I am, but, <clears throat> so help me out, is this, did you bring in new soil, or is this soil already here? This is from our manure pile. From the like, horses? Yeah, but okay. we have manure pile that's quite significant, that's got old soil for maybe 10 years. And let's say people didn't have a manure pile. Um, I know like we have a lot of times we have local nurseries that have a horse manure compost and people can go buy that. Um, can Are you familiar as to why, is there like a difference between horse manure, cow manure, other types of composts? You know what, if it's that old, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna be hot. So it wasn't, for us, it wasn't relevant. We just have, we use it for planting and everything. It's like old and it's just it's dark and rich and wonderful and smells good. It was available. Nice. No, it didn't even smell. It's just yeah. Awesome. So we had it available, which I'm a big believer in, and we have more to you know replenish it, which is awesome. Nice, very nice. Here is what happened. We love our water. I'm a believer in our water. If our nipples would break and then had problems, I wouldn't be selling it. Period. I love it because I'm all I'm the laziest chicken person you're ever gonna see on camera, ever gonna meet. Um, here's what just happened. Someone decided to take one of the best horizontal nipples, which are really, really nice, send them to China yeah. so he can get them cheaper, and that's why they're breaking. Right. It's that simple. Um, I'm doing everything I can to get them back American made. Our coops were kind of set in the stage, and I love that you're gonna make it your own and you wanna use what's best for you. Um, so I can definitely understand, especially when you see you mentioned earlier the contraption from another company. And yeah, it's a horizontal bar and the nipples are breaking. They shouldn't break. Um, ours don't break unless you actually drop them on accident during installation. Uh, but we have seen it. We've seen the new ones coming in from China. The elasticity and the plastic and the mold is just not that good. It's my happy place because we used to have the open feeder in the other one. Yep. And we have field mice everywhere. Uh-huh, yep. So the minute you would pick a pot up or anything that was outside, you'd have like little mice, whatever, which is not clean, not happening here. So we've only been testing this out the last two weeks. It's working like a charm. The um, mechanism on it is that the weight of the chicken steps on the platform and they eat the feed inside. So you start them out, you loosen the bolts, and then you leave the lid open and teach them that that's where the food is. And then after they go there to eat, then you put the lid down. And now they know, they come up, they just step on it. I love that. In this particular situation, here's what I love about it. One, a client that um, is saying she likes it, the chicken's learned it. It makes sense to me real quick from a being, knowing about a lot about mice. It's all about prevention. That's the number one thing in sanitation. Don't give rodents a reason to come to your area. Now, yes, mice are, they thrive on cereal and grains. Yes, they're omnivores, but they prefer cereal and grains. And they can, now believe it or not, okay, I know, okay, you YouTube chicken, please. Well, put in, put in quarter inch by quarter inch mesh, not half inch by half inch. Believe it or not, the only hard part in a rodent's body, in this case with mice, is their skull. Their skull is smaller than a quarter inch. If you can fit a pencil through an opening, a mouse can fit through. Believe it or not, a rat could fit through this. Um, and we've experimented with quarter inch by quarter inch. It just doesn't look good. But either way, I am a fan of prevention. Um, and even like with table scraps, I mentioned a lot too. It's like feeding fish. You don't want to overfeed them. Don't leave 
so many scraps in here that chickens can't consume it or you will uh, invite pests is what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. so i love this um now how did you find this right on google was it recommended you know what i think youtube everybody's talking about it and everybody apparently said don't buy the cheap one you have to buy the grandpa's so the original heavy stainless steel so all right, so guys, if you're out there, if you have this, please let me know because I would love to offer this on our website. I love seeing this. I won't ask you anymore how much it cost. So. I think it was 140. Okay, thank you. Well worth it, because here's the other thing too. This is gonna pay for itself just in saving on food. Get another beautiful shot. Love the egg hutch. Got your windows closed. Got a beautiful cupola up there. Hold on, hold on. Actually, so, again, we have one in there laying. We're not sure if she's on this side or the other side. She's here, I can hear her. Let's see what happens. See, she's not freaking out. If we just lifted the roof, she would jump. Guys, look how beautiful that is. It does not get any better. She's making sure they don't jump out this way. Look at that. They're not freaking out. One more quick shot. Thank you, I know it's perfect. Awesome. So we're gonna let them be. They love the nesting material, long and stringy. They want to make a nest. Let them make a nest. Straw. Yep, straw, hay. Yeah. Um, I don't recommend the industrial hemp. I don't like pine shavings. Use, what, what would they use in nature to make a nest? Okay, so. So we had never seen hemp bedding before. We use pine for our animals here. And the other thing that we use is, um, untreated wood pellets that people use in their wood pellet stove okay and the reason being for that is that in our animal pens if you dump a pile of that any liquid it poofs up into this like magic absorbent um but that's kind of all we knew until the old hemp um which has been phenomenal so this has not been touched since the day we put it in Yeah. Dry. You and, and also, guys. So here is the Aubie chick. It's ground up a little bit smaller. It is designed more spe specifically for chickens. I haven't slept in four days, so if you guys, please forgive me. Um, uh, this stuff has been awesome, and you will love it. It just helps with that compost, that nitrogen to carbon ratio. And again, as long as you're not overloading it, hi baby. No, no, no. You're not allowed to get out. Um. You, you're going to be amazed. You will absolutely be amazed by it. Got so many videos on the deep layer system. Bottom line, you're composting. Make sure you do not overload your hen house. Oh, she's going to, oh, she's getting in there. That's the other thing, guys. Not each hen gets their own nest box. Rule of thumb, four to six. But you have, yep, so 13, four, 14. 14 chickens, and they're going to already use two. They and, only use the same two. Yep. Um, so that's seven chickens each. So that's pretty good. That's about average. I would say usually about seven to eight easily. Um, but you want to make sure they're not fighting over it. And also, I'm sure they showed you, uh, you can pull the dividers yeah. if you had to. So that way, if you had to make a bigger one, a bigger nest box. And or if you have baby chicks and you want to, if one goes broody and you want to, especially you mentioned your daughter's in 4-H. It's just such an awesome thing to watch the baby. Let, let nature do its thing. Let these mama hens do what they are awesome at. So this looks awesome. Nice and big, very roomy. Okay, baby. No, no, we don't want you getting out. Um, so the deep litter's in there. So I'm not gonna, again, I guess bring or bring more links up. If you want to see how to clean it out, that deep litter door drops down, does not get any easier. It's just so beautiful. It's just absolutely breathtaking. So you're building a chicken yard. We're gonna build a chicken yard. Um, they'll be able to come out. We're, we're gonna do like the fence. Old, re upcycle the old fence post, put some kind of um, chicken wire, something on the inside, and then landscape it, and then do some four by six veggie herb flowers, fun, and like a little patio so we can visit with them. Nice. Yeah. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it, especially because chickens love to get out, mm -hmm. give them as much room as possible. And in my opinion right now, I'm seeing everything Darn near perfect. Cool. Yeah, and I said it. All right, so you YouTube people, go ahead. If you're going to give me a thumbs down, you better tell me why. Tell me what's wrong. Tell me what you don't like. Um, but thank you to the other 99.9%. .9%. Thank you for all your support out there. Thank you for all the likes, subscribers. If you're not already subscribing, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Thank you so much for that support. And also, I want to 
put another shout out. We're going to be starting our podcast soon, Radio Chicken. I can't wait. I'm going to start educating as much as possible. If you're not going to buy my coop, I want you to build your own coop and I'm going to teach you how. Listen, I can't thank you enough. I literally, I just so put you on the spot and you did awesome. Have you, do you, have you ever done an interview before on camera? No. This is your first one? My very first. Um, okay. Well, you did amazing. All right, guys, we're going to cut it. See you later. We're going to see you soon. We're going to be in, uh, yeah, take a look for our videos. We're going to be in Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, coming up right around the corner. More custom coops. Thanks for watching. Work it, work it.